Hi everybody, I'm Joni Young and welcome to my channel. This is an acrylic painting tutorial of how to paint a hummingbird. I'm working on an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas and have the following colors. Neon rose, pink, titanium white, neon yellow, lemon cool, light blue permanent, light blue violet, aqua green turquoise, sap green, and dioxazine purple. What I'm going to do is take a large brush. I've got a number 30 filbert brush. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet and pick up colors and just start creating a really blurry background with multiple colors. Then I'll be coming in with another brush, a soft dry blending brush, and I'll be creating little circles just to blend out any harsh uh, brush streaks and just make it really soft and airy looking for the background. So with a little bit of water on my brush, I'm going to start with my light blue permanent and I'll begin to add it here on the top right. Making sure to get all those little edges around the sides too. Sometimes I like to take the painting around all the edges and sides of the canvas and other times I like to just use black and paint the whole edges like that. The next color I'm going to take is my light blue violet and I'll start adding it here and then slightly overlapping into the light blue. Okay, then I'm going to take my turquoise and I'll take a little bit of my sap green. I'll take a little bit of dioxazine purple with my sap green. A little bit more of the blue violet and I'll add it in with that dark green and purple. A little bit more turquoise now. So we get different shades of green down here. And then over to my dry blending brush. And all you want to do is just create these little circles and that'll give you that nice airbrushed look. I'm going to add one more color to my palette. This is Thalo Cyan Blue. And what I'm going to do now is add a faint rainbow in the background, and I'm going to be using a number eight filbert brush. I'm just going to get my brush wet a little bit first, and then I'm going to take some white and some of my pink and I'm just going to pull a big arch for the beginning of my rainbow. It's important to add a little bit of white. That's the trick to painting rainbows. Every color you add, you want to add a bit of white because acrylics dry darker. And I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to line it up partially where I left off with the pink so that when it layers over, it creates sort of a reddish orange. Again, 
make sure you're adding some white. I'm going to bring it down a little lower because I plan to go over with some green and it'll make a nice shade of green. by doing this. So let's take a little bit more yellow. If it's if your brush is a little bit too dry, you want to go back for just a little bit of water and a little bit of paint. So it really helps to have the paint on the tip of your brush. I'm going to take a little bit more pink and my yellow and I'm going to mix them up to make a gorgeous um, coral shade. And then a little bit more pink. And again, remember that white. That white is really going to help. Okay, and then the next color I'm going to take is some, a little bit more yellow and my turquoise. Again, add, adding some white. And we'll add it over part of the yellow. And then I'll come in with a little bit of blue and white. And then I'm just going to take a clean filbert brush, a little bit of water. And just push that back up so it's a little narrower. And now I can come in with my neon rose, add a little bit of the of uh, the rose to the blue first. We'll do this first and then it'll be a really pretty soft purple before a little bit stronger of a color of rose. Okay, and then I'm going to take rose with white. Make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. And then a little bit of white. Now, if you happen to bring your arch up and go over too much on those other colors, you can just carefully take a little bit off and then bring those colors back. And 
and then the blue. You can even take a little bit of that light blue permanent. and then back over see how I'm using my pinky here this really helps uh, steady your hand and then I'm going to take a little bit of white my brush is kind of dirty here I've got a little bit of that rose left on there and I want it to be that light rose shade. And then, you know, just go back and push that paint back up. right off the edge of the canvas. There's a little bit of yellow and pink. Bring that over and then just straight a little bit of yellow. I kind of like the, the kind of disappearing feeling of a rainbow, you know, when it just kind of don't see where it starts or where it ends. It has such a magical feel to it when it's like that. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of my light neon pink with a bit of white and I'm just going to go over the edge, up just above that neon pink where I left off. Rainbows are one of those really fun things to paint that you can kind of just play around with and make as intense as you want, but it really is the key to add a little bit of white. I'm going to pull in a little bit more orange right in here. After this totally dries, we can come over and soften with a misty um, whitewash dry brush um, and just make it look really powdery and soft looking. So I think it would be kind of pretty to come in here and add uh, some clouds. So I'm just going to take my filbert brush again, maybe a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to push around little circles, turning my brush in different directions. And have some breaks in the clouds where we see that uh, blue sky. And then I'll take a little bit more white, really wiggle it, put it on the tip of my brush like this. And add a few little 
thinner little scoops. You can layer as much as you want. And I've got quite a few how to paint cloud tutorials. Have a look through. My most popular one that's really easy to follow is uh, three steps for cloud painting. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a little bit of pink with my yellow and white and add that and we can give these clouds a bit of a iridescent uh, look to them by doing this i'm going to use a larger filbert brush this one happens to be a number 16 and i'm going to add a few little um, waterfalls in here and I think that would look really pretty. I'm going to add kind of iridescent ones, the same pastel colors. I'll start with some yellow and white. Wiggle, get it on the tip of my brush, really fan and flatten that filbert brush out. That's going to give you the best effect and outcome. Maybe we'll start right in here. See it's a little bit lighter right there. Add a little line and then drop. I'll take a little bit of pink. And maybe a little bit of rose. Always adding some white. And then I'll take a little bit of my phthalo blue, a little bit of turquoise, and a light blue permanent. And maybe I'm going to add a little bit in between here. A little bit more. And then maybe down below just dust lightly back and forth with that very soft dreamy look where there's not a lot of color add a little bit of yellow and white i haven't washed my brush out I like to have a little hint of each of those colors in there Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take one of my soft mop brushes and I want to bring in some flowers along the side here and some greenery. Um, so I'm just going to start along the edge here and I'm going to take a little bit of my light blue violet to start. We'll start kind of on the side here with some softer colors in the distance. Because we still have to do add our um, light background add a little bit right there doesn't that set a beautiful mood it almost looks like it could be some fairy kingdom back there okay then i'm going to add a little bit of white to that blue
Got a little highlight. Soft highlights here. And then just a little whoosh, gentle pull and drop. And then sweep up. Make sure you remember to wash your brushes out. I'm going to use one of my little round brushes and I'm going to add some more light up there in those clouds. I have a really, really bright. highlight on these. I'll take a little bit of pink and add a little bit more. Just little bits here and there. Okay, now I'm going to come in with a soft uh, dry brush, thin paint with a little bit of white with my large uh, filbert brush, number 30. So you just want to have a little bit of water in your brush to make, help make that paint transparent. And I'm actually going to just tint it with a little bit of yellow, just a small amount. Okay, and then I'm just going to start, maybe we've got some, even some sun rays, just a little bit like that. Really want to soften this area up here. Here we go. This is going to dry a little bit darker, but it's going to be really, really pretty and soft looking. So I added just a little bit of white there inside those clouds. The next thing I'm going to kind of do, next thing I want to do is come in with another mop brush and add another highlight there. I'm going to take a just a little bit of that blue-violet, mostly white, not a lot of paint on my brush. Okay, and just add a few more highlights here, just to make these pop out a little bit more towards us. Okay, and then I'm going to start coming in and adding um, some deep greens in here. I'm going to use another mop brush. I'm going to start with my Dioxazine Purple, tap in to the sap green. It's got a nice deep dark base here. And I'm going to start along the side. Get some along the bottom there. I'm going to bring some up 
around the side like that and then I'm going to come over and do the same thing here on this side. Add them a little bit in front of the rainbow. This helps give you that beautiful perspective and keeps things in the distance and really stand out here in the foreground. Okay, I'm going to just rinse my brush out. Go back over to my small uh, filbert brush, my number eight. I'm going to take my yellow, turquoise, and some white. Just take a little bit more of that yellow. And I'm going to go inside, push. Push and twist, and then in a V or a point. You can even add a little bit of um, that sap green in there too. Change up your shades of green. You just create a few pretty and simple, simple leaves like this. Doesn't take a lot of skill or effort. I can add this to dry paint or to the wet base coat like I have already. And I'll come over on this side and add a little bit more. Again, white, yellow, and turquoise. Try to have them going in different directions too, so you don't, it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Push, wiggle, twist off. If you're ever not really sure about what shape your leaf should be or what kind of shape you could use for a base shape of a leaf, you can either go with like a heart or more of like an upside down tear drop. So instead of the pointy part of the tear drop at the top, you're going to paint like an upside down teardrop or raindrop but I kind of like to have that little shape of a heart where it goes up a little bit more on either side I'm just going to come in and add a little bit of sap green in here just change change up that flat tone you just don't want to have your leaves all the same color because that could be really boring and leave your whatever you're painting this happened they happen to be leaves that I'm demonstrating now but um, you don't want everything to look flat and the best way to prevent that is by adding different tones okay so it's all dry now and I think it'd be a good idea to just come in and add a few more highlights so again into my 
turquoise, a little bit of yellow and white. I don't want to have too, too much uh, paint on my brush. Right here, just to make this one show up a little bit more, a few of these here. This is just a really thin, transparent shade because I've got some water in my brush. That'll be enough just to give those a little bit of a frosty, pretty highlight. So maybe what we could do is paint uh, like a little hibiscus up here. I'll create a simple version for you guys so we can all do this together. And then we'll have uh, maybe just a few other, maybe little roses. I'm just making this up, this pretty little fantasy world. So I'm gonna continue using this little brush, number eight Filbert, and I'm gonna start uh, with a little bit of purple, a little bit of purple and a little bit of rose. So give us a nice, and a little, just pull a little bit of that sap green in there. Okay, so we're just gonna start with a center here Pull out a little bit like this towards the center of the canvas. And then we'll pull up a little bit here and then a little bit on this side. We're gonna have a little bit right here and a little bit here. So it almost looks like a star, except this doesn't come straight out. There's just a little kind of chunk in there, almost like a triangle shape, okay? Just to help you guys out with uh, adding it and making sense of it. It really helps me to break things down into shapes. I mentioned that quite a bit in my videos, so hopefully that helps you guys too. I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to take some white now and a little bit of neon pink. And I'm going to start right in here and just pull little lines into the center, towards the center. Then I'm going to curve, curve, and then bring it out like that. Let's pick up a little bit more paint, load our brush up again. Lightly go over. So these ones fan out this way. They kind of go and scoop and swirl down to a fan shape. Okay, and then the next time I'm going to use a little bit more neon pink and then we're gonna dip down like this add a little scoop go over that purple base coat and then come down here go up and curve over Okay, now I'm going to, with a clean brush, take my white, tint it with a little bit of that pink. And we're going to start from the outer edges, so really bumpy and wiggly. And then pull in. How's everyone doing so far? You guys all following along okay? Remember if you have any trouble at all, just leave a little comment below, question, or if you're a Patreon member, I can help you out. I'm just gonna wiggle, wiggle, pull, pull.
a little bit more white on those edges. This is a fun flower to paint. I don't think I've painted. This might be my first hibiscus. There's a lot of little ruffles and folds in this one over here. And they're quite, quite big flowers, quite large. I'm just gonna take some white here, scoop, and then wiggle. Bring it in, back out, wiggle, wiggle. And then it's a little bit more pink on this one here. Remember to wiggle and kind of turn your brush around. And we're gonna come drop it down here and then bring it back up and curl in. Take a little bit of white to make sure that that shows up once it dries. And then we've got this other one here. And the same thing, wiggle, wiggle, and then it curves in. And use some more neon pink. You can cut inside this one and can make it a little bit bigger. Pull in some more of that neon pink and add some more beautiful color to this hibiscus. Let's uh, incorporate a little bit of that neon rose with that pink. Scoop, scoop. And for a little bit of a shadow over here, I'll go to my light blue violet. Try to make sure I don't have too much paint in my brush, so I'll just dab it off on the towel there. I'll just create some shadows within the little folds. Maybe I will use just a little bit more on the tip of my brush. Okay, and a little bit of white. And with that, pull into a few areas
Got a few little scoopy lines right there. Tap and dab a little bit with the white and add a few lines. Back in for a little bit more light pink. Some rose, a little bit of dioxazine purple. A lot of a little bit more depth scoop. And then I'll add a few that haven't opened up yet. So to do that, <clears throat> I'll be adding the center to this as well in just a minute. I'm going to add a little bit of rose and um, my pink. And I'll just add a little almond shape like this. And then what I'll do is take a little bit of pink and white. And just swirl a little bit of just white and just a little Something there as well. Okay, I'm going to go back over to my little round brush here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to take a little bit of uh, light blue, violet, and purple. And I'm going to add a few little lines. You want to make sure you have enough water in your brush that it flows easily and you don't end up pressing too hard. So I'm going to take a little bit of that off. So it should be pretty transparent and runny. We'll just finish up with this one. And start adding the center of the flower. So for the center of the flower, I'm going to be using some pink. I'm just going to get a little bit bit more of my neon yellow, a little bit of white, more on the pink side. OK, 
Okay, and then we're going to go from here, just add a little line, and then narrow at the top, and then it gets a little thicker, a little bit thicker in the center. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white. Soften the top side of it. Rinse my brush out and go over to my pink, rose, maybe a little bit of purple in there, and add a shadow on the underside. And then what we have are just some little lines like this, these little things that stick out on the end. And a little bit here too, little flowers. And then some yellow dabs. And then I'm going to just go around with a clean brush in dioxazine purple right in the center here and add the last bit of depth, just straight purple inside these petals. Finish with a little bit of pink. Okay. I'm gonna come around here with my purple. Add a little bit of shadow here. Around the edge. Maybe this one is starting to open up a little bit. I'll add a few, maybe just another leaf or two in here. Tuck it in a little bit. A little bit of turquoise. What's that green? I almost forgot to add the little dabs of pink and yellow on the ends here. just going to start working on the hummingbird but I want to add a little bit more saturation and pop of color so just doing a thin layer of the neon pink so we've got our deep purple rose there we're going to go just above that And 
and carry that through all the petals. And there's a little bit more color on that center that comes out too. Okay, so I just added a little bit of white there because it was a bit see-through. Sometimes flower petals are you know, that kind of transparent, but that was too see-through, so I just added a little bit right there. Now we can start working on our uh, little hummingbird. So I think we'll have one hummingbird. We'll start the beak right here, right off the bat, so that we can line it up right. So I'm just going to use this little um, filbert brush again. I'm going to come in with a little bit of pink purple and white. Get it on just the tip of my brush here and we'll just pull a little beak in. We'll come in with a head. Come down the body. and bring it in here. So let's take a little bit of blue and purple. Come inside. Got a little eye that's going to be right in there. And it comes down to a V. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue violet in with my purple. Blue violet, phthalo blue, and purple. And we're going to have a wing that starts in here. So you're just going to go bubble up under. And then we'll do it just dark first. Okay, so the wing comes up higher and then on a slant gets lower and lower. Take a little bit more blue, a little bit of turquoise. We'll start just pulling in for the back, a little bit on the head. We're not really going to see the other wing on the other side. And then a little fan shape for the tail feathers. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Okay, and I'm going to go back a little bit of white and that peachy color and I'm gonna go over the top of the hummingbird's beak I'm gonna come under the eye a little bit over Pull in a little bit of pink, a little bit of white. Pull 
apply these short little brush strokes. bit more white and I'm using my pinky here it really really helps pull the tail the end pointy in here let's go into our turquoise a little bit of white pull flick A little bit of turquoise and blue. Little bit of white added. Dab, dab, dab. And ultimately, you just want to make the feathers smaller and smaller as they get tucked in underneath the wing. The farther out they are, they're going to be a little bit longer. So you're going to pull longer strokes before you let off. And same with on the tail. Now I'm going to use a little bit of white and light blue violet. Pull, pull. Add a highlight on the top of this wing, and that's going to join up with this brighter part of the bird. Okay, and then I'm going to just add a little bit of a little bit more light. Okay, now I want to come in with some more color. A little bit of peach in here. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow. Okay, so I've got a little bit of yellow and white on the tip of my brush, and I'm going to add that to the breast of the bird, anywhere I want, really, to make it look kind of shimmery, so kind of shimmery and iridescent looking. And I'm going to take purple, no water at all, just purple, I'm going to come Underneath, work on the beak a little bit as well. Make it a little bit more visible. So I'm going to go a little above that beak and a little bit below. And then add a little circle for the eye. Rinse your brush out 
And I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise, yellow and white. And I'm going to just go right above that dark spot, scoop in and up over the head. And then a little patchy like Add a little bit more color to the wings. We'll just let that eye dry a little bit and then we can come in um, with a little highlight in his eye or her eye. I'm going to take some of my pink and a little bit of that phthalo blue, maybe a little bit of blue violet in there. Add a little bit more. In the wings and the tail feathers. And a little bit of phthalo blue. Scumble underneath the bright part of the wing. Let's take a little bit of diapsine purple in with our blue. I'll take a little bit of pink with some white. And we'll start right under the beak here and just graze over a little bit of that purple. Just over to my filbert brush, my number eight. I'm gonna make sure that these wings stand out from the background, so I'm going to add a little bit more white to them. 
mainly just the tips of them. And then a bit of yellow and white. Okay, now let's add a little highlight, a little bit of, well, let's take a little bit of blue and white. It doesn't have to be straight white. And we'll just add very tip of your brush, little tiny brush, first an outline. Up and then down and then cross two little dabs on the eye Going into my neon rose here that's starting to dry, and I'm going to add a little, little bit of it where I left off with my phthalo blue and purple. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was really, really fun and relaxing. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned a lot. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more. It's free. And if you'd like to make a donation and help support what I do here, there's extra videos and some gifts waiting for you over on Patreon. I'll have links below for Patreon, Instagram, our Facebook group, and of course my YouTube channel. Take care, everybody. I wish you all the best in your painting journey, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!